Welcome to the Pistons Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective on our Detroit Pistons. I was going to wait until after the debut of James Weissman tonight to drop a podcast. I am going to drop one immediately after the game, but I just wanted to come on and share some more perspective of the, who James Weissman is and what type of player we have going forward. So, uh, Weissman has... You know, there's again a lot of controversy about him and about whether he's a bust or what people are expecting and that we gave up Sadiq. But I um, I just want to tell you that he is going to embrace, he said he's going to embrace this opportunity and Troy hopes that he's going to unlock his potential here. And I, I think that a big factor in Weissman's success is going to be, um, I, I hear all the right things being said to James Weissman by the Piston uh, front office and people around him. And so he has this great atmosphere, you know, their self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think that what he's hearing from the Pistons and the opportunity that he's going to give is going to give him confidence that he's going to be able to, you know, develop his amazing talents. So I'm going to go through a few things. Um, Bob Meyer I'm just going to read something. He, Bob Meyer said he's a great kid. He did everything we asked him to do. Bob Meyer is the general manager of the um, Golden State Warriors, and he has been very successful. I mean, he drafted Draymond in the second round. He drafted Clay Thompson late in the first round, later in the first round in the middle, and he, Clay uh, Steph was like a seventh pick, so a bunch of teams passed on him. So, I mean, he has a great uh, record of drafting, and he's done a great job, you know, uh, putting together the dynasty that is the Golden State Warriors. But he said he's a great kid, did everything we asked him to do. To move someone like that is hard because he's such a great person. He said, I think we debated it pretty heavily, mostly because I think we believe that he can be a good player. I think Steve Kerr really uh, hit it on the head when he said, I think that between the injuries and the inexperience coming to a team like ours that's fighting and playing for championships and a group that's been together for a long time, it was hard for me to give him, James the runway he needed. And we talked about that. You know, the, the Piston players, you know, if they were thrown, the, our young players who are so talented, you know, what would they, what would they happen there? You know, even Duran, who has been just, such a exciting uh, player this year, and so you know, such a bright future. It appears his his defensive metrics are not good. You know, they're not any. They're like the same as his Weissman, and so a big part of why Weissman couldn't stay on the floor was um, his defense. But he never got very much of a run. He never very much played very many minutes, and so um, it's just good to hear that these people, you know, that were close to the situation, they're not saying, they're, they're saying that he's a great kid. They're saying that he has talent. They're saying that, you know, he could be a, a great player, but that it wasn't the right fit for a player to develop when you got all those good players and they're trying to compete for championships. So there's been a lot of comparisons. You know, I've talked on this podcast before. I'm not, uh, thrilled about comparisons. You know, it's really hard to do, but a big one was Chris Bosh. And, of course, Chris Bosh is a Hall of Famer. But the truth is, in my opinion, um, that doesn't mean he'll be as ever as good as Chris Bosh, but Weisman is more talented. Weisman is more talented. He's more skilled. He handles the ball better. He's way better in the open court. Weisman could take the ball in the open court and go length to length. Weisman can catch the ball at the three-point line and just put it on the floor, and he makes these great moves where he drives, spins, and dunks. He, you know, he is just really skilled, and he is um, really fluid, you know, which is different than Bosch. And now Bosch, you know, Bosch, you got to give him credit. He, you know, he got brought into Miami and to play with Dwayne Wade and LeBron James when he played you know, in Toronto, he was the scorer. He was the man. He was an all-star. And he he played, his, his real big shot was his turnaround 17-footer. And he turned into a three-point shooter. He adapted because that's what they, he needed to do to play alongside of LeBron and Dwayne Wade because those two both loved to attack the basket. So there wasn't much room in there. They needed room to operate. So to be a good teammate, which he did, he he moved, turned into a three-point shooter. I think that, I mean, at this point, Wiseman, you know, he's really early in his career, his shot looks good. And he hasn't shot great from three yet. But I do believe that Troy's plan is to play Wiseman with Duran. And again, I, I talked about last, um, 
that like that game where against the Spurs where Duran got switched off onto a little point guard and he got down in a stance and he moved his feet and he just took on the challenge and he 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 kept him in front of him. And so I think that Duran can play people out, but I think also Weissman can. And it is just I mean, it would be so terrific to have two seven footers or you know, Dern's not quite seven foot, but two great athletes that can really jump. And, you know, again, I believe that um, he's going to be a better shot blocker that Dern is going to be, but I think that Weissman can be. But defense takes time, and they're both so young. You know, Dern's 19, Weissman's only 21. And so I think that, that, you know, the dream is going forward that those two can play together. And, you know, Stewart would be great guy to come off the bench to bring that energy and that tenacity. So we look at people, you know, why didn't he play and what happens, but there are a lot of uh, people who were considered bust. And I mean, I, I don't know that he was ever called a bust, but Cam Thomas that plays for the Nets when they traded away Kyrie and Durant, and then all of a sudden they had no players before they got the players that they received in the trade. He had three games in a row. He's a second year. He averaged like eight last year. He scored 40, over 40 in a row, three games in a row. And he just, because he got the opportunity. And Chauncey Billups, I mean, we know Mr. Big Shot. He was drafted number three by the Boston Celtics. And he was a bust. You know, they traded traded him away. And he he went on to play in a couple, of, he went to play in Denver. And then he got traded or signed with Minnesota. And then, he signed with Detroit, and the rest is history. We got six trips to the Eastern Conference Finals, but he was considered a bust. Uh, right now, currently playing Markel Fultz, that he was dra- drafted number one, and it was fun. You know, the Celtics traded the Sixers wanted him so bad, so they traded multiple assets. They they got the Sixers number three pick. The Celtics did, and the Celtics got and the Sixers got the first pick from the Celtics. And they drafted Fultz, who was the consensus number one pick. He went on to be complete bust. He got he couldn't even shoot free throws. He couldn't even play. It was so much in his head and his lack of confidence. Well, he's playing in Miami right now, not Miami, Orlando, and he is really playing terrific basketball. So another people person, you know, people talk about um, well, Bosch and Bagley and Weissman are all left-handed, so that's quite. They're all both long and pretty lanky and to compare Weissman to Bagley and I'm not you know it's very very unfortunate what's happened to Marvin Bagley getting hurt before the season starts so then he has to be integrated partway through the season and he played really great for times he had he had a when we won those two games out west he was like 11 for 13 in the two games combined where he just couldn't miss and he is he drives in and spins a lot like um, Weissman can but Weissman is more fluid, smoother, and more athletic than Bagley is. So I think, therefore, the other comparison besides their long, tall, left-handed, they both were the number two player taken in their draft. So that's easy to, to compare those two. But I do think that uh, Weissman has much more upside. And, and it, it remains to be seen. And I'm so excited that we get to see it tonight. But I'm going to make this a short one, but I just want to thank so much man i'm blown away by how many of you are watching my podcast it is humbling i love your comments i will do my best always if i happen to miss one going through them i apologize but i try to i'm gonna do my best to answer every single one but it is so thrilling for me that people you know want to get some piston content and again this team is exciting the the potential of we're we're um and I probably will say this again at the podcast tonight, but the Pistons rank 12th in the NBA in attendance. How can that be? It's because Piston fans and Michigan fans and Detroit fans, they are amazing. You know, what happened with the Lions this year, people just went crazy. But to be 12th in the NBA when you have the, the third worst team and, you know, imagine What's going to happen when Cade comes back? And I, again, I believe Cade's going to come back better than ever. What's going to happen if Weisman turns out like I'm thinking he's going to? And we'll get that uh, high pick in this upcoming draft. And next year, I mean, things are going to be so special, but it's going to be important what happens the rest of the year, not only, you know, in the development of Weisman especially, but then Ivy and Duran and 
all, and Killian and all those guys, Stu, all those guys got to keep on getting better. Cade's getting better behind the scenes, and I just couldn't be more excited. But yeah, like I said, thank you all for following this uh, podcast. Please keep sharing it if you know of anybody that likes the Pistons like we do. And um, I hope that you have a great day and we'll be on later tonight. Thank you again for my wife, for my, all her help, and my nephew. And do something nice for somebody today and go Pistons. And let's see you rock it tonight, Wiseman.